Hello. Welcome to a guide about materials and how they affect ship components. There's a lot of different woods and metals, so first let's check out how they look. Here's a trunk and a panel made out of each material. These two are pine and birch, which can be found on the first island. When you make a trunk with pine, its resilience will be 278 with a weight of 58. With birch, its resilience is 267 and weighs 48. So for 10 kilograms, you gain 11 resilience. I'm using iron for all the latches to keep it consistent. Next is night birch, 272 res and 55 weight. So a little heavier than regular birch. This one is reducing birch, 293 res and 61 weight. So a lot more res, but heavier than the night birch. This white looking wood is pillar pine, 300 res and 65 weight. Here's a Pothian pine wood. It's got kind of a reddish tint. 282 res with 52 weight. Seems like the higher the resilience, the higher the weight. There is also pure and flawless versions of all the woods. So refer to Kaleco's chart if you want to min-max your stats. And now the same thing for the metals. You probably don't want to build with these first three, the conductive metals, copper, silver, and gold. Okay, now this one is iron, kind of a rust color. This panel and metal trunk are tin. Here's lead, which is very low resilience at 254 res for 95 kilograms. It's actually kind of a cool green color though. This one is bronze, also a greenish color. This one is zinc, which looks soft and light. It's a sweet looking blue though. Here's steel, which I'm too lazy to make. It's a very vibrant red though, so it might be worth using. Here is Saborian alloy, which you can't mine. You just gotta find this on the ground in the higher tier zones. It's much higher res than everything else, but around the same weight. It's pretty rare, so I try to save it for the core or something important. Here's aluminum, one of my favorites. Uh, the resilience isn't amazing, but it's crazy light. The last one is titania, which is very strong for its weight. I like that yellow orange color too. Okay, that's what the materials look like. Let's go over how to use them. The first slot is usually the casing. Sometimes this affects other stats, but mostly it's resilience and weight. Casing usually affects the color too. Here, I'll place every engine in the game so you can compare size. I'll use titanium and pillar pine for every one to keep it consistent. First, the box pile crud bait. Pretty funny name. Next is the scrap heap cranker. This is what I used in 1.0 till I found the tri shells. Third is the spin shaft cyclone. Oops, that's a green one. We missed a white engine, the square frame pace setter. I believe this is the engine from the tech tree. Back to the green level engines. This is ventilated rival. This one's the twin exhaust tri shell, lots of power and resilience. This one will be super good until they add fuel. Okay, now for the late game blue engines. First up, Apotheus Cloud Chaser. Next is Descent of the Falcon. The mathy people in the Discord said this is the engine that has the best power to energy ratio. Personally, I think it kind of sucks. The little wings make it hard to place. You would need like 30 of them. Um, and because of the lack of mirroring, it kind of makes them look ugly. Next is the Iron Forge Starcaster. Pretty balanced stats in my opinion. Really good resilience and power. Here's the Angel of Amun. Lots of people like this one. I think the resilience is way too low. The energy is much too high and the wings make it really hard to place. One out of 10, definitely thumbs down. Barfing emoji. Now I save the best for last, the God Hands Pursuit. Super high resilience and power, low energy. It's basically a little block, so it's hard to tell it's not being mirrored. And it looks really sick with a turbine. Five gold stars, the best. Ding. I'd like to point out these are just the base engines. 
you can change stats and the way it looks with subcomponents. But that's for another video. Before I move to the wings, I just want to say making a video like this kind of sucks for me. So if you think it's useful, please give it a thumbs up or a comment or something so I know people want to see more videos like this. Now for the wings. Still the same materials. This one is Pilly Pie Driftwood Blade. This wing gave me the idea for the Driftwood River Island. Here's regular Driftwood Blade, I guess. It's missing the blade. They look like they have duct tape holding them together. Next is the barn door hatch flap. Looks kind of cool. Now the green tier. The hard edge cutter is very good rudder wing. The cloud line fin is also a rudder wing. The next one, the Aeronite Z80, was my favorite during early access. It looks like a world's drift wing. Now for the two blue wings. This one is called Aether's Run, a great wing for pitching up and down. And last is the Heaven Splitter. Awesome name. The wing power and rudder stats are pretty close to each other. So this is a good wing to have at a 45 degree angle. Kind of like my box ship has. Um, what's next? Oh, the machine guns. Starting off with the white tier, we have the funnel nailer, then the nibble puncher, and the rustic scrapper. Yeah, that orange and white looks very good together. Moving to the green tier is the Heretic Shredder, M360 Quick Spin, and the SM9 Tenacity. Blue tier is just Typhoon Screamer and Unwavering Avalanche. Be careful making these. If you get the rate of fire above 1K, they will bug out and they are pretty uncontrollable. I did tons of testing and they are not worth using directly on the boss. Well, in my opinion. Lastly, the cannons, my favorite. Um, first up, the Rapidar, I'm pretty sure I'm saying that wrong. The Rapidar SSC4, then the Scrap Cannon. This is what I used on the first Arbiter and then I replaced them when I found the Ignition Anchor, uh, the cannon that I used for most of the game. Next is the Trump Moss Stinger. In the green tier, we have the Banshee. The Ignition Anchor, Low mobility, but high power. Next is the reinforced frame BBF-12. BBF-12. And finally, the blue tier with the Titan Peacekeeper. Kind of a beefy version of the ignition anchor. And last but not least is the Aurora Scorpion. I think this one looks really cool. I really like that snub nose. Okay, there's all the stuff in the game. Okay, that's not true. There, there's crafting stuff and tons of decorations and, and the cores, of course. Okay, let's put this all together into something useful. If you want details on what each stat does, like for example, in Worlds Adrift, the power stat didn't affect damage. It decreased the arc of the cannonballs fired. So they shot in more of a straight line and it was easier to hit your targets. In Lost Skies, it now does directly affect damage. Okay, let's do an engine first. For casing, use a strong metal. I liked iron in the early and mid game and then aluminum titanium in the late game. Mechanical internals, I prefer power. So probably pure iron or steel. Flawless iron or titanium late game. 
The intake and exhaust slot affects resilience and fuel efficiency, uh, uh, barely. I would just use what's lightest. I prefer aluminum in that slot, uh, but you don't really have it in the early game. For the blades, it is similar to the mechanical internals. You want to use your best grade of iron or titanium for power. Or if you want acceleration, aluminum works really well. For the wing, the casing should always be a strong metal or one that looks really cool. Internals, I recommend pure or flawless iron. They are good for all power related things. Bronze is very good for rudder strength. Flawless titanium is pretty amazing for wing strength. And flawless aluminum seems good for wing strength and rudder. The connector affects aerodynamics, which, which I don't use, but it looks like bronze is good for that. According to Kaleco's chart, copper, silver, and gold are weirdly good for a response. I might have to try that out. I've just been using something really light, like aluminum or zinc. The tip is aerodynamics or resilience, so bronze for aero and steel or Siborian alloy for res. The machine guns, sometimes I use them for the mantas. Or on the ball things, the bosses shoot. So the machine gun is kind of low priority for me, but I'll, I'll go over it quickly. For the mount or second slot, it's iron slash titanium for rate of fire. Aluminum for mobility or a Siborian alloy for resilience. The ammo loader is iron, bronze, or titanium for power and rate of fire. The barrel is also power, so the same, iron, bronze, or titanium. Okay, finally, the big cannons. So loud and fun to shoot. For my dream cannon, I like titanium casing. Strong and cool looking. For the base, it affects resilience, rate of fire, and mobility. I prefer rate of fire, so iron or titanium. If you want mobility, it's going to be lead, aluminum, or tin. For the ammo casing, it's iron or titanium. What a shock. And for the barrel, you guessed it, it's iron or titanium. I used Kaleco's chart thing to compare numbers, but a lot of this is personal preference, so don't be afraid to experiment. I hope this was useful and not too boring. With this out of the way, my Battleship video should be a lot smoother, so subscribe if you want to see that. It really is the next video, I mean it this time. Thanks for watching and have a good one.